I'm not a spontaneous person. Are you going to joke for scripted? You'll never know. <laughs> Did you think it was that scripted? <laughs> We're going to talk about the chain rule today. Chain rule, oh man, it's so cool. It lets you tie all this calculus stuff together. Uh, this is the last major rule that we have. We will talk about implicit differentiation, which leads us to related rates, something very useful for you. Uh, but as far as the rules go, this is it. This is the last derivative rule that you get. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much just applications. So that's kind of nice, right? So basically the rules are product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. Uh, most of your calculus rests on that. Most of your derivative rests on those, those rules. So what this is, what the chain rule does, it gives you a way to do derivatives with compositions. So it lets you take derivatives by using compositions. And just to refresh your memory on why we might do this, uh, I'll give you that example again. I, it's on the last video, so I want to make sure it's on this one as well. Uh, this is the reason why we want to learn the chain rule. Uh, I gave you this to you earlier. I said, can you take the derivative of that thing? Easily. In fact, if I, if I did this, derivative would be 6x, and then you're done, right? And I, I, I built on it a little bit. I said, OK, well, what if it's not that? What if it is? squared, could you still take the derivative? Yeah. And it says, yeah, you probably foil that out, right, distribute it, and then take it term by term. I said, okay, well, what happens if it's, if it's cubed, and you go, I can still do the same thing, or, I could, or use pro the product rule, I could still do that. Distribute one of them, use product rule. But as soon as we get to things like this, and I think this is where I went the oh crap, <laughs> right, you go, come on, man, are you serious? Do we really have to do that? Yeah. But if you think you're going to distribute this 100 times, I mean, that, that's just a waste of time. So there's got to be a better way to do derivatives of this. And as a matter of fact, there is. And it's actually not hard. It, it's kind of an easy way to do it. And you're going to like this. So all the times where you had to distribute, remember, like when you had the squared, you had to distribute that, right? Like in the, the first set of homework, you're like, oh, man, it's tedious. Well, and the tedium. Now this takes care of that. So anytime you can see a composition, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the composition here in a second, you can use the chain rule. So I come with theme music now. <laughs> All right. The question is, can I express this thing as a composition? Which is why I had you cover compositions and, and had you go with the reverse of compositions, looking for a function within a function. That's why we did that. So when we get to this point, like, oh yeah, I kind of understand that idea now. So, can I express this as a composition? And the answer is, yeah, I can. And here's how you do it. Here's a, a pretty basic way to do these things. What you're going to do, you're going to cover up the inside of your function. So, what I mean by the inside here is the, the 3x squared minus 4. You with me on that? You can cover that up, and you're going to go, okay, I'm going to make a function y equal to whatever you covered up becomes an x. And you know what, let's make it a, uh, let's make it a u. A u to the 100th. Make it a u to the 100th. Do you see how, how I got that? Do you see that by, by holding this part out, I get a function that's very basic y equals u to the 100th. Do you see where the u to the 100th is coming from? But then you have another function to, to express. You now need to say, okay, well u is going to be, what did you cover up? Then that has to be your u. And that would be a very basic composition. Do you see if I put the u in for this u, this expression in for this u, I'm going to get that back again? Can you see the composition here? Basically, if you cover it up, you go, okay, that's u to the 100th, and u is what's under my hand. 
And that's, that's how we get those two things. Ridge can't be located with that so far. So sure this is a composition. That's not bad at all. Well, could you find dy du? Could you find that? What's this mean to do? Derivative of y of y with respect to what? Oh, with you. Okay, so so do it. What's the derivative with respect to u? That should be a very easy one for us. You okay with that so far? You sure? Okay. Can, could you find du dx? Could you find du dx? That's the derivative of u with respect to x. How much is that going to be? That's the 6x. Are you okay with, with these two things so far? So we write this as a composition. We take the derivative of the first expression, that's the like overlying function. We take the derivative of the inside expression, that's what we chose as our composition to compose into that. But the problem is this. What we ultimately want to find is dy dx, right? We don't have that yet. We have dy du. We have du dx. But you're going to find out right now why we stick with this notation, because this is kind of cool. Are you ready for it? If we want to get dy dx, so what about dy dx? What about dy dx? The question is, can we put these two things together in such a way that it will equal dy dx. For instance, I'm looking at a dy du, and I'm looking at a du dx. Do you notice how the du here is on the denominator, and the du here is on the numerator, and we have a D, dy on the numerator, which we want, and a dx on the denominator, which we want. What operation can I put between this one and this one so the du's will be gone and I get dy dx? Yeah. You know what, look at this. If I say, well, let's just take dy du, let's multiply it. That looks like an A, doesn't it? Let's multiply it by du dx. The beauty of this notation is that those little pieces do act like something you can cross out, something you can simplify. So what happens to the du's in this case? They're gone. This right here is the chain rule. What it says is that dy dx will be equal to dy du times du dx. This is chain rule. That's the chain rule. Okay, so how do we use it in practice? Let's, let's apply it to this scenario, okay? So when I ask you for ddx of 3x squared minus 4 to the 100th power, who cares where you got that from? Can you do the derivative? Here's what it says. It says take your dy du take your dy du that's this okay, I'll show it to you that way. Take your dy du times your du dx. In our case that's the derivative with respect to u of u to the 100th. That's where we got this, right? Derivative with respect to u of u to the 100th. Are you seeing where that's coming from? Then it says times the derivative of the inside, the 3x squared minus 4. That's the du dx. Do you see that dy du is this thing? It's the derivative of your 
your function with respect to you. That's what this part is. Are you okay with that? The d du dx, that's the derivative of what you call u. The derivative of what you call u is the inside part. If we take that derivative, it says multiply dy du times du dx. So take the derivative of the overlying function, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's, that's what this says to do. Uh, what was this again? Times, what was that again? Do you see a problem with this? Yeah, we have x's and we have u's. We want which one? X. Well, x's. Do you know how much u is equal to? Sure, that's why you had this over here. So if we can do that substitution, we go, okay, the x looks great to me, but the u doesn't look so great. I want to make that u back into what u equals. So let's do that. We'll get 100, 3x squared minus 4, because that's our u to what power? Don't forget about the 99th power. Don't forget about the exponent times 6x. Now, you could make it a little bit prettier, but I want to come back to this and talk about this for a second, okay? Because I want you to see the practicality of the chain rule. Uh, firstly, what are you going to do with this? this. You're going to do something with this. What are you going to do with the 6x? Multiply. Multiply by what number? Yeah, do that. Okay, don't leave it hanging out there as a time 6x at the end. Now, naturally, please don't, please don't do this. Don't distribute the 100. Okay, you can't do that. Because that's an exponent. That says in order to distribute the 100, you'd have to foil that out 99 times. Do you get it? Please, for heaven's sakes, don't do that. All right, don't do that. Just multiply this number times this number. And we get 600x three x squared minus four all to the 99th power. That's it. That's a pretty easy way to do a derivative, isn't it? Not too bad. Now, let's look at what actually happens here. Because I want you to see this. This is going to be, in general, what we did. Is there a way that you can get from here to at least, well, actually, probably this step. We can get almost from here to here in one step without showing a u, without showing a, a du dx and a dy du, without showing that stuff. I want you to think about what we're doing. Do you see what happens to the 100? What happens to the 100? Power rule. Yeah, that's basically just your power rule. Do you see it? the 100 comes down to the front. You leave this thing alone, right? That's in the parentheses. It says you leave it alone. Why do you leave it alone? Because you end up substituting back in the U. That's why, because with the composition, you're going to get that U back again. Do you see that? You're going to have some U here. You're going to get that. So we have a U back again. That means you don't change it inside. Where's this piece come from? Where's the 6X come from? Yeah. And this is called the general power rule. It's a corollary of the chain rule. The chain rule is the overall arching idea, but what we can do oftentimes with this is something called the general power rule. And it says the power rule works in general if you do this. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So general power rule. So when you ask me, well, wait, I thought you said there's only three rules. There, there really are. There's only the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. However, the general power rule is like a, a little piece of the chain rule, okay? You get the general power rule from the chain rule. Do you understand? So the general power rule says, 